Pastor Boyle coming to you from Revival Studios in Orlando, Florida at the Revival Baptist Church. And with me today, I've got Brother Greg Cameron, Brother Scott Campbell, and we got a crew back behind the camera. I got Brother Sean Pizak doing the sound, Brother Garrett back there on the uh, computers as well. And then the audience, I got Hugo and Julio back there. So it's a great day for an uh, episode. This one's going to be an important one as we're going to try to take a complicated subject, and it's complicated, and bring it down to a simple explanation of what we believe and why we believe what we believe. But this is the episode of What Sayeth the Scriptures? And no matter what the topic, we're gonna, we take the topic and we set aside all preconceived ideas and we base our beliefs on what saith the scriptures. And the topic for today will be Daniel's 70th week, that w week of prophecy that's determined, that still is yet to happen. It's a seven-year uh, period that uh, many of Bible scholars, you know, they discuss. You'll see all kinds of YouTube videos out there. I want to start off in Daniel chapter number 9, where we get this idea that there is a week of prophecy still determined. And it begins in verse 24. Daniel 9, 24 says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. For there are know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks. And three score and two weeks the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. Unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Verse 27 is going to be key uh, in our understanding of the 70th week. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consumption, or con consumin cons consummation, of the de of that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. If I can read, so this is a this is the book of Daniel is not an easy book to begin with. The, the second half of Daniel is very complicated, but many Bible scholars are familiar with this passage as we see seventy weeks, each a week representing a year. Uh, each day of the week representing a year, and that all those have been fulfilled except for that one week that is yet to be determined, a seven-year process in time. And we all want to, you know, all the, the Bible scholars are going to try and figure out when that day is, when it starts. But there's one thing about this week of prophecy that we know. In the middle of that week is when the abomination of desolation is set up. That th When that takes place, you're going to know you're in that week of years that God is talking about that is yet to be determined. And so there, you know, you can start and go through the other 69 weeks. It tells us exactly when they begin and end to the coming of the Messiah, till where he was cut off. All those have happened. But that one week that's still determined has not happened yet. And in the middle of that week or the middle of that seven years, is when we see the abomination of desolation set up. And so our discussion today is to try and lay out those seven years and prove according to scripture that not all seven are tribulation and not all seven are God's wrath. They're divided by a, a middle uh, event that is the abomination of desolation and there's the tribulation side and the wrath side. And so we've got the panel here to get today and we're going to try and make this this complicated subject clear so that when you read your Bible, you'll be able to see it. It'll, it'll jump right off the page. It'll make sense to you. And you'll see that this coming week is divided clearly in two with an event of the Antichrist setting up this abomination that maketh desolate. Yeah, so uh, I like how you said that, you know, we're going to be talking about the events that surround that one 
uh, key event, which is the setting up of the abomination of desolation, because the the this prophecy and this end times uh, prophecy that we're going to be talking about is all built around our understanding that the middle of that week there's a major event that takes place that's referred to and this is where we have to ground ourselves when we figure out the timing of different things the understanding that the abomination of desolation is set up at the middle of the right. seven years because as we chronicle the events starting from the beginning we'll work backward from that we'll start at the beginning what what starts that seven year period we see the abomination of desolation set up in the middle we believe and it's very clear once you see it in the bible that shortly after that abomination of desolation is the rapture and then once the rapture happens for the remainder of that seven years god is pouring out his wrath on this earth right right and so the first place that uh, before before you jump in on there okay. let me just make that with that with that outline given that's why revival baptist church holds what we call a post-tribulational rapture right. view and I, you know, maybe you might have to stop and go back and listen a couple times, but there is a narrative that we see according to scripture. There's seven years that's determined. In the middle of that seven years is when the Antichrist is gonna set up that abomination of desolation. Shortly thereafter, after the tribulation part, but before the wrath, we see a multitude no man can number that shows up in heaven. And that's what a post-tribulational rapture view means, not post seven years. Uh, that would put Christians in God's wrath, and we don't believe that by any way, shape, or form. So go ahead. You were trying to take us to Daniel, I believe. Yeah, so the reason why I like going to Daniel, since we started there, is in Matthew 24, Jesus, when he's prophesying of the exact same period of time that we're going to be looking at, he says in Matthew 24, verse 15, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, Whoso readeth, let him understand. So I like that parenthetical statement right there. So let's consult God's word. Let's read. Let's read what Daniel was saying. And let's see what we can glean from that. And then let's start the timeline from that point. So if we go to Daniel chapter 12, understanding that Jesus is prophesying of this and it hadn't happened yet when right. Jesus, this is key because a lot of people are like, ah, Matthew 24 is done. It's already happened in history. Now, we're going to be talking about the end of the world. And that hasn't happened yet because we're still here. So when he's talking about this, these are things that had not even happened yet in our day. Daniel's prophesying in chapter 12, and he says uh, in verse number 9, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. That's what Jesus was talking about. You read, you're going to understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So we believe that the abomination of desolation clearly is set up right in the midst of the week. So from that point to the end of the seven-year period, there's 1,290 days. So if you do the math there, you're going to understand three that that's years. three and a half years, okay? Now, the beginning of the chapter points us to the beginning of that week because right. he says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and that at that time thy people shall be delivered even everyone that shall be found written in the book and here's the rapture and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt okay yeah. now the reason why I wanted to go there is because it's talking about a very specific thing that we can actually find in Revelation chapter number 12. So let me let me piggyback on that because I just I went ahead and jumped ahead. I knew that Revelation 12 would would pair with that. We saw what we saw in Daniel was 1290 days from the time that that abomination is set up by the Antichrist in the middle until the end. Mm -hmm. But you say, well, what happens the first part of those three and a half years well that's right. where we read about a time of trouble and those graves would be opened up before the second half takes place and that's exactly what you read about in revelation chapter number 12 
this Michael the angel we read about in, Dan in Daniel 12. Well, watch what happens in Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars, and she being with child, uh, ch uh, child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared a wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and having seven crowns upon his head, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for her to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, and he was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and her child was caught up into God and to his throne. Now here's what's important. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that she should feed her. They should feed her there, a thousand, two hundred and threescore days. So remember, we know that from the time the abomination set up to the end is one thousand two hundred and ninety days. But now, before this, in Daniel said there would be a time of trouble, and that it would be a, uh, 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 the people would be running and hiding, and then we see a rapture take place. Well, here in Revelation, it says that that time of trouble is 1,260 days. Surprise, surprise, three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So the Bible has just, if we're following it, has just taken seven years, divided in half, and gave you the exact number of days for each one. 1,260 days, tribulation. 1,290 days, we see from the moment that the Antichrist sets up the abomination until the end. And so that's why we don't ever look at it as just one big chunk of seven years. Exactly. Because every time these 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 events are 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 mentioned or referred to, they're referred to in halves. Mm -hmm. Time times half times. Forty in two months. What's forty two months? Three and a half mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't he say eighty four months? That would be the seven. You'll never it's always divided in half, and the middle is what's significant yeah. is that abomination of desolation. Once you understand that, then you understand that not all seven are tribulation. Right, and if we were to call it all, all seven years the tribulation, we'd be in error. Right. And so what we're trying to do is, is, is go to the Bible, let the Bible define how we should be referring to these periods of time, because even if we were to go and do a study on the word tribulation, which... You, you should you should do you should do a word right. study on the word tribulation there's john 16 33 there's acts 14 21 22 clearly talking about christians going through tribulation tribulation is a word that's paired with adversity persecution trouble second corinthians chapter number one is a great place to go to see that christians are going through tribulation and so when we say, hey, we're going to be here for the tribulation, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, we're not appointed to wrath. But here's the thing. Once you have a working understand, uh, a definition of the word tribulation, you know that we're not talking about Christians under the wrath of God because tribulation, the tribulation, and the wrath of God are not synonymous. So what do people normally say? <laughs> We're not appointed under God. <laughs> <Brother> so, <Greg. clears throat> even that same thought, the way God delineates his wrath from the devil's wrath or the mm. world's wrath is even in the same chapter we're in, in Revelation yes. chapter 12. Yes. So, let's look at verse number 12 and read to the end. It says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell on them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Right. So at this point, all we know is the devil's coming down with great wrath. So he's, he's angry. He's, he's, he's wanting to do something with his wrath. Well, the rest of the chapter tells us. Right. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nursed. Now pay close attention. For a time and times... And a half a time says so one plus two and a half is that three and a half. Yep. Says from the face of the serpent right. 
And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon, here it comes, was wroth with the woman, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have a testimony of Jesus Christ. So if you know the, the timeline, you're familiar with the timeline of the book of Revelation, chapter 12 precedes chapter 13. You have, God just lines up the numbers. Amen. And what is what is so special about chapter 13? Well, that's when we actually see the Antichrist come on the scene as that great leader. And at the end of chapter 13, he's revealed as that one that sets up that image in the midst of the week after that you know time, time, and half a time. Mm -hmm. So everything preceding that is the wrath of Satan, the wrath of the world against believers, the remnant of God's right. seed. So we know that that's where that halfway point is it, it's in revelation 13 so mm -hmm. if to, to clarify what we're saying the first three and a half years or to use bible terms time times half times 40 and two months it's satan who was kicked out of heaven he's come to the earth and he's mad mm -hmm. it's not you know i don't know what people think maybe the tribulation is like god sends a lightning bolt and satan sends one back and it's just <laughs> like these hmm. no 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 mm -mm. The first three and a half years distinctively tell us that he's mad. And it says in verse 14 that, that she was nourished for time and times and half time from the face of the serpent. Mm -hmm. So the serpent is the one inflicting problems right, here. Right. And the, the woman the, 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 that uh, is, is protected from this serpent, from the face of the serpent. And verse 17 says the same thing, to make war with the remnant of her seed. And we know that that is the saved, and we'll, we'll right. we may build that later. Yeah, but that's even what he says there in that same verse, which keep the commandments, which of, keep God the commandments and have of God, the testimony right. of Jesus Christ. So he's explaining what he means by the woman. Who is this woman? It's yeah. those that keep the commandments of God, the saved. So it's very there. If you start to if you start to let the Bible lay the narrative out, and you set about you set aside any preconceived thoughts, mm -hmm. seven years. It's not seven years. There is seven years, but it's three and a half three and a half with an event in the middle that divides the two and the first 42 months the woman is fleeing mm -hmm. who's the woman those that keep the commandments of god yeah. the saved she's flee who's she fleeing from not the wrath of god the wrath of the serpent mm -hmm. right he's great wrath but then the second three and a half years it's trumpets and vials and god pouring out a judgment right. like never before and no no saved person will be there because there's an event that happens right after the abomination yeah. of desolation, a multitude no man can never show up. Now, if I could say this, because a lot of times I suggest to people, do not get lost in the imagery that God's using. No. Rather, pay attention to the very clear things that are being said. You know, for example, there's a lot of references to three and a half years here. Mm -hmm. There's even uh, so even in the imagery itself, he's tying things together. So when we started in Daniel chapter nine, uh, he said in verse twenty six, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And then here in Revelation twelve, he says in verse sixteen, and the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon casts out of his mouth. So he's tying together these two portions of scripture for us. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to what make war war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the devil turns uh, and he's got a specific target at this time. In this time, times and half a time, these 1260 days, he turns and focuses on those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ and he comes to make war with them. And one last thing before I pass it on to you, because I like how you always tie these two things together. Because in chapter number 12, when we were in uh, Daniel, we read about how at that time Michael shall stand up. Okay, yeah. We read about that again in Revelation chapter number 12. And, and, the, and it says in verse number 9, And the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Oh, actually, verse number 7 talks about Michael. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. 
And the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And he was cast out, and his angels were cast out with him. And then he says that he knows that he hath but a short time. And that's right. very much like what Jesus said to Judas. Right. He said, what thou doest, do quickly. And Judas went out to betray Jesus. And we know the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. And here, when the devil is cast out of heaven into the earth, he says, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. And, just, and he knows that he has but a short time. And that is what starts the seven-year exactly. process. So when this battle takes place, both Daniel and Revelation have indicated that when this battle in heaven takes place, Satan's going to be kicked out and God's going to say, start the clock, buddy. You don't have much time left. Right. And Satan's And he mad. knows that. And Revelation tells us that he's coming with one thought in mind. He's getting the woman, the seed of that uh, that that uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's going to persecute that woman, and God's going to protect that woman for forty and two months, until we see the second half when God opens up the sky and pours out His wrath. But I want to give some evidence, some scriptural evidence, that that first forty-two months where Satan's mad and he's fighting with the Christians, that that's not God's wrath. Right. I mean, clearly, I think we've already done that when it's the the serpent that the woman's hiding from. Mm -hmm and that the serpent's the one making war with the saved. Right. But let me just give you some examples, because during the first 42 months is the time of the seven seals. And I liken those seven seals to when Satan came to God for Job, and God gave, Job, or God gave Satan boundaries. And Satan would only, he, and by the way, when God gave him a boundary, he went to the extreme on it. He, every inch God mm -hmm. gave him, Satan took. And God would say, okay, you can only go so far. And then God would uh, say, okay, now you can only go so far, but just don't take his life. And I believe that's what the seals are. It's God setting the standard, setting the time frame. All right, you can do so much. Okay, you can only do so much. Okay, you can. And so God's still controlling the narrative because God's in charge, but Satan's wrath is what's at play. Now, in those seven seals, the fifth seal. Anybody know what the fifth seal is? Mm, the prayers from under the altar, right? The persecution of the saints, right. And these people are praying during the fifth seal. So this fifth seal is during the time of the first 42 months where the Satan's mad and he's fighting with the, with the saved. This is what happens on the fifth seal. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain. Why were they killed? For the word of God and the testimony with which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, notice this, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So here we are, the fifth seal in the first 42 months. And the, those that have died, their blood, their souls, they're crying out, saying, How long before you judge? Mm -hmm. So has God judged? Nope. Is this God's time of judgment? It's Satan's wrath. Right. And I, 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 I've yet to hear how someone can explain that if this is the time of God's judgment, how the fifth seal is the persecution of saints. Mm -hmm. Right. God's persecuting his own people. No, Satan mm -hmm. is mad and it's his time and God's going to end it with a rapture and we're going to show up in heaven in Revelation chapter 7. Then the time of God's wrath, which is still another 1260 days or 1290 days and you'll see those days and the two if you were to write take them and write down the events that take place they're nothing the same wars and famines and pestilences the wrath of god third of the earth is burnt third of the seas creatures coming out of the ground with tails like scorpions right. I mean, this is clearly the wrath of god and, and you see you see the wrath of god coming from heaven down into the earth right and when you read about the events of the tribulation, it's and when we say earthy. tribulation, we're talking about the first three and a half years of that seven, where years. the saints are persecuted within that that time, that period of time, and none of these things are coming from God in heaven down into the earth. They're actually coming because Satan's in the earth, and right. he's making these things happen from the earth, and yes. he's come to make war, ultimately and specifically with the saints and so to that point and you can jump in anytime you want but to that point remember we we, we showed through scripture how that the seven years starts when satan makes war in yes, heaven that with is Michael. key right what's the first seal 
of the first three and a half years, the Antichrist. Right. The very first event that happens in the seven in the beginning of those seven years, those first 42 months, the very first event is the Antichrist shows up, which isn't surprising when Satan's cast out and he's mad. Mm -hmm. And of course, he's setting up his regime. Mm -hmm. Antichrist shows up, wars and pestilences, and then, but I wanna give one more example that the first 42 months are not God's wrath. And that's why we don't believe that we're raptured before the first 42 months, because we've been told all through scripture, we're gonna go through tribulation. Right. right. We've never been promised that will escape tribulation. Mm -hmm. We have been promised we will not see his wrath. Now, Revelation chapter number seven, if you're understanding what's happening here, seal one, seal two, seal three, seal four, seal five was persecution and they were crying out, Lord, how long before you judge? What's going on? So he hasn't judged yet. Seal six has opened and seal seven is about to be opened, but there's an interruption. Mm -hmm. Because if you know what seal seven is, seal seven, are seven trumpets of God's mm -hmm. wrath. And so before God can pour out his wrath, we have to be removed. Yeah. And we haven't been removed yet. Right, because and we do believe we are not appointed under wrath. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So the Bible says in Revelation chapter seven, verse number one, and after these things, between the sixth and seventh seal, I saw four angels on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with the loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So here comes six seals open, seven seals about to be open. Here comes four angels and they're going to come to hurt the earth. The earth has not been hurt yet, not by God. And they're coming to hurt and punish the earth, okay? Verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So they tell him, wait, you can't hurt the earth until something happens. And, of course, we see the 144,000 mentioned. They're sent to the earth, and a multitude no man can number shows up in heaven. And then jump to chapter 8, the seventh seal is opened and the trumpet judgments begin to take place and we're not there. So clearly, based on Revelation chapter seven, when they're about to hurt the earth, means he hasn't hurt it yet. And then rapture takes place and then God judges the earth. Fifth seal, which is in the middle of those 42 months, they're crying out, Lord, when will you judge? He's not judging. Right. They're not facing his wrath, they face the wrath of Satan. And there's a big difference. And so we hold a post-tribulational rapture view, which means not post seven years, but post-tribulational time of 42 months that the Bible calls tribulation, but pre-wrath. Yeah. We will not see the wrath of God. And I think that was an important uh, uh, point to make at this point in time and differentiating, differentiating that. Uh, but if we, if we could jump back uh, to the beginning. So... We've seen so far that Satan is cast out of heaven into the earth, knowing that he has but a short time. That is the, the event that kicks off the tribulation, tribulation the seven-year seven period in its entirety. We've established that we understand that the tribulation, when we refer to the tribulation, we're talking about the first 42 months, uh, which we're going to show are going to culminate uh, that at that midpoint, there's going to be an abomination of desolation set up, and then the culmination of the tribulation and the great tribulation, which is a short period of time following that abomination of desolation, is the rapture, which you just showed us in Revelation chapter 7, that multitude which no man can number shows up in heaven. And then at that very moment, the same coming of the son of man in the clouds with power and great glory where he comes to gather together his elect that's the rapture that very same uh event is a great and terrible day of the lord because the greatness is that he's coming to take uh to deliver his people like like daniel said that that thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book delivered at that moment and at the very same time, we read that that uh, is the great day of his wrath, which is come at that very moment, and who shall be able to stand? Right. Yeah. And if I could, so as just kind of to recap, 
it, it just it needs to be said because people have been brainwashed. So we're trying to get the terminology set and the understanding set. So you had seven weeks, 62 weeks, and then one week. Then the, the one week is only mentioned one time. Then every other time it's referenced, it's cut in half. Every other time. There's no other time where it's all lumped together as one week. And why? If it's all God's wrath, why would God even delineate one part from the other? Why right. would he cut it in half and say, well, this is the wrath, and this is the wrath, and this is the middle of the wrath? That, that doesn't really make sense. So when we when we look at what the Bible is showing, it's showing the devil's wrath, the God's and God's wrath, and it's cut in half with the abomination with make, which make it desolate. And when that happens, that is when all out war is declared on the saints. Right. That's what Seal Five is all about. And and we need to get this understanding in our mind. What's the purpose of this, right? So God made a promise, and the promise is all through the book, but the, the greatest wording that I find is where he says, he will recompense tribulation on yep. those that trouble you. So at, at Seal 5, these saints are being being beheaded, they're being killed, they're being slaughtered. Satan is just having a heyday, and, and they're just dying, and they're crying out for mercy. They're crying out for God to punish those on the yep. earth, and, and that's right there in that midpoint. And then you have that time of silence. And the funny thing is, is a cool thing about it is they're under the altar crying out. Well, chapter 8 starts out, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and Amen. lightnings and an earthquake. So the promise is, God said, I will recompense tribulation on those that trouble you. There's those that are under the altar crying out, God, please pay them back. There's this altar or this angel standing at the altar, and then those prayers come up as an incense before God, and that, that he's standing at that altar, and he just scoops up that fire, and that's the dividing point from yeah. the devil's wrath to God's wrath, and he just casts that fire upon the earth, mm -hmm. and God says, I'm paying, I'm paying you back. Can I, can I just read that portion of Scripture yes. real quick? 2 Thessalonians chapter number 1, uh, where it says in verse number 4, so that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. So we just we're talking about the churches of God. That's got to be made clear yeah. because everything that we read now is applying to them. When he says your patience and faith, your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, it's talking about the churches of God, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer, seeing it as a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So we're going to be going through a time of trouble. And Daniel said, such as was not, nor ever shall be. Right. And God's referring to it again here, but he says, I'll recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and for the glory Amen. of his power. Amen. Right. <laughs> that, that is what we read about. It's parallel that's in Revelation. To what in those we're three about. chapters, seven, six, seven, and eight. Yeah. But you notice there. Do you see, do you see a consistency with exactly. Scripture? Exactly. Tribulation and then trouble. Trouble. The coming of the Son of Man, the coming of Jesus Christ, the no great and notable day of the Delivering Lord. Delivering those. Delivering Taking the, the prayers from the fire and exactly. then casting it to the earth. And then the and flaming great fire, flaming, the right. wrath that comes at the coming of our Lord. What's neat, once, once you begin to understand what's being said in Scripture, a light bulb comes on. Amen. And all of a sudden, some of the most confusing chapters become so crystal clear. You start to see the same language being used over and over and one of one of the things that i struggled with i used to hold a pre-tribulational rapture view and the biggest evidence for a pre-tribulational rapture view 
is all the verses that tell us we're not going to go through God's wrath, just like Noah was taken out before the flood. But what they failed to prove is that the first 42 months is God's wrath. Right. No, no, no. They failed to realize that the first 42 months No, is... no, no. That, no, failed they to failed to that. prove that. Oh, okay, all right. They can't... And so once you... So in your mind, they're telling you all seven years is God's wrath. And then you begin to realize, no, God's wrath doesn't start until that moment we just right, read right. about. Well, then that puts a big problem. If all your evidences are proof of not being under God's wrath, that puts you at the second half. Mm -hmm. You have to now have proof beyond that that it's actually before Satan's wrath. And everywhere in Scripture, God is warning Christians, promising them, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Why are we a special generation that when Satan's mad, he's going to take us away from that? When everybody else through history faced the wrath of Satan to receive a crown of life in heaven. And so once that, once that begins to... Uh, unfold and you begin to realize there's a difference between the two it's very clear that mm -hmm. there's a time of satan's wrath a time yeah. of of god's wrath and it's divided by that abomination of desolation all seven years are not tribulation and all seven years are not god's wrath and mm -hmm. i want to give a couple thoughts on that um, one is in matthew 24 29 the bible says immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and that Amen. fits exactly the verses we just read mm -hmm. when the souls are crying out how long before you judge and god takes those prayers from that fire of the altar and he cast it to the earth and we see the sun darkening when does the sun and moon darken mm -hmm. in the timeline of mm -hmm. events everybody yep. has to agree because it's in there very plainly <laughs> in the middle yep. yeah after the abomination of desolation so According to the Bible, just using the Bible alone, the Bible says that that is considered after tribulation. Amen. Yeah. So the tribulation ended at the moment the sun is darkened. That part is called tribulation. Well, what's still left to come? The great day of his wrath is yeah. come, and who shall be able to stand? Another uh, passage that proves that is Mark 13, verse 24. But in those days, after that tribulation... The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he shall send his angels, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. So again, the tribulation is over. That part of it is over, not the seven years. The 40 and two months are over when the sun is darkened. Yep. There's still a time, times, and half times mm -hmm. left. One more passage, and then I'll let someone jump in. Mm -hmm. Joel chapter 2. Remember how I said once you see this, yeah. a light bulb clicks? Well, now the books, the minor prophets were always confusing to me. Mm -hmm. I never understood. But listen to Joel chapter 2, verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness. Now, just stop. Bible scholars, put on your hat. When does the sun turn to darkness? after the tribulation right the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the lord come the day of the lord his wrath right when he's pouring out when does the wrath of god come after the sun is darkened that's what takes place before the great and terrible day of the lord now they'll always say oh no the day of the lord is all seven years no the sun is darkened mm -hmm. before the terrible day of the lord then the terrible day of the Lord. Yes. And so once you can understand that, that there's a big event taking place in the middle of this week, and it's always referred to in first half or second half sections. Even like you said, the one time it's mentioned as a whole week, it's really not. Right. Because it tells you even in that same passage that in the middle of that week, yep. that Antichrist is going to set up the abomination of desolation. And even when it's referred to as a week, it tells you from the beginning, it's two parts. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing here, let me, let me just explain just a basic uh, understanding of what, 
how are we drawing all these different connections, okay? Now, but in Bible prophecy, specifically when we're talking about this event and this time, okay, this timeline, there are many places in the Bible that talk about this same event. We'll refer to them as parallel passages. They're right. talking about the same thing. And if you were to line them all up next to each other, you will see consistency in the order of events. You'll see consistency in the description of these events. Right. As you're going through that and you're talking about uh, the, the, the sun becoming black as sackcloth of hair and the moon becoming as blood and the stars of heaven falling into the earth, all right, I have right here in my notes, I've got 10 different chapters in different books, some of the same books, different chapters, different portions of scripture that talk about that exact moment, giving you different clarities uh, because talking about different details of the same event, but we know that it's the same event because it's fitting in the timeline, it's talking about the same events, and it's using almost identical wording to describe this. Vi I think in one place he says the great and notable day of the Lord. Right. It's notable. It's spoken about how many times? It's spoken about many, many times. Th these ten, these ten different examples that I printed out are not all of them either. Right. Yeah. But that just goes to show that what we're doing here is we're comparing spiritual with spiritual. We're using the Bible to help us uh, find these parallel passages. And then from these parallel passages, we're drawing different details yeah. and filling in the gaps that may be found in other portions of Scripture that are filled in by other parallel passages. And even one of those pat I don't have it pulled up, but I'm thinking it's in Isaiah. Yep, when Isaiah it talks about the day of the Lord, 13. it talks about a fire being behind them and Eden being before them, showing that they're 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 leaving the earth to be set on fire by God and go into that paradise Amen. in heaven. So Amen. I mean, it's just so clear, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it all begins to make sense. But you have to dispel of this thought of a seven-year tribulation period right. because you will not find that in Scripture. So everyone thinks seven-year tribulation. It's not in the Bible. Yeah. And the Bible tells us clearly when it begins, when yep. Satan's cast out of heaven. What's the first seal of the tribulation? A conqueror the, going the, forth to conquer. Yeah, the Antichrist is set and up. And then you see wars. Yeah. And then when does the tribulation end? According to the scripture, when the sun is darkened and mm -hmm. the moon doesn't get... And when does and that happen? And shows up? Right. The Son of Man shows up. The Son up. of Man shows up. And what does he come with? And then what follows that? The wrath of God. And right. that is your basic timeline and you'll see that consistency over and over and over and over again in your bible a time of trouble a deliverance and then the wrath of god right you'll see and that over and there's over there's one again. more thing we haven't even touched on and i just want to put it here when he shows up in revelation chapter six you know everybody sees him right the, even the rich man the great man they're all you know crying for the rocks to fall on them and to hide them from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and the bible calls that his appearing so it's not that he's just secretly showing up right he makes a point this is it i'm done yeah mark yeah. 13 i believe talks about that or or luke 21 talks about the the men's hearts failing them failing for, for fear. fear those things which right come, yeah and that same event that same coming is is what he's talking about and then uh but in those days uh after the tribulation the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall be fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven amen so now, it's not a secret right and tie that this is where it gets it just remember all these are going to start connecting now tie that with when jesus ascended amen when jesus ascended and they're all standing up they watched him physically ascend into mm -hmm. heaven okay acts chapter 1 verse number 10 or let's uh, let's first begin verse number nine. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, this is talking about Jesus, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which said unto, which said also, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This 
same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go mm -hmm. into heaven. Okay. So he's taken up in a cloud, and they all saw it, and they're watching. And the angel said, he's coming back the same yeah. way. You're going to see him. When Everyone's going to see him, and it's going to be in a cloud. And every time you see Jesus showing up, everybody sees him. You know, the, the one of the biggest, biggest uh, uh, doctrinal points that a, a pre-tribulational rapture view holds is a secret rapture. Right, yeah. That you don't see Jesus. Like, it's even depicted in the movie, right? Left Behind, where people just wake up the next day and it's like, where did everybody go? But but where is that in the Bible? In fact, let, let me let me take you, or you have a place you wanted to go? Well, I, I was just getting ready to, to kind of uh, start putting together some of the pieces, like uh, where, where Satan shows up, the Antichrist shows up, the war with the saints, the abomination of desolation, so that we can prove from the Bible that all these things happen before the rapture. Let me, uh, let me just jump in before you do that and finish this thought of we're going to see Jesus come back, and that is not a secret. And, you know, you won't find that in Scripture, uh, even though I, I taught that for a long time because I thought it was mm -hmm. there. I don't think that people are intentionally making false statements. It's just we didn't know. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 1. 1 Thessalonians 5 says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Mm. And that's their... See? That's their verse. Close it up. It's like a thief in the night. Boom. He showed up. But don't stop reading there. Amen. Amen. Okay? For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Here's what he says. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a surprise. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day, and we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, not let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Jumping down to verse number nine, for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So there is the proof that we're not going to be in the wrath part of that week. And that it's going to be a thief in the night, but not to those who know Bible prophecy. Right. We're going to be saying, Amen. hey, he says, when you see this, when you see the tree beginning to bud, you know what? Summer is Summer nigh. Is nigh. Mm -hmm. He says, when you, we're not going to know the day or the hour, but we're going to start connecting all these dots and saying, summer is nigh. It's close. He says, when you see all these things, you're going to know summer's not. Well, when we see all these things come to pass, know that the end is near. Is that what he says? Mm -hmm. And so we can begin to say, hey, things are shaping up. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming. And, you know, lift up your heads. Redemption draweth not. Yeah, over and over again, he's, he's, he's telling us, you know, I'm telling you these things. You know, so that you shouldn't be offended. Right. That you have something to watch for. That you have all of these things. I'm telling you, so that you would watch. And and that's what he says. He says, "What I say unto you, I say unto all: Watch." You're supposed to be paying attention as a Christian. You're supposed to have studied these things out and understood that there are certain things that that God has told us that will take place in a certain order, and you need to know. And he, you know, he doesn't tell us exactly the day. He doesn't tell us exactly when this is going to happen. We don't know that exact moment. We can't put it down on the calendar, but there are certain events, key events, in a key order that he has given us, and he said, hey, pay attention. You're not like those you know, that were in the days of Noah where they were just eating and drinking and they had no, no idea until the floods came upon the earth and then they were taken by the flood. Sudden destruction came upon them. It took them as a thief. They had no idea. Right. But he said, you... Right. You, I have told you these things, and you're supposed to have studied these out and know this order so that you're prepared for a time that's coming of really, really a great trouble that's coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then to the Lot and Noah reference where many pre-tribbers hang their hat on that mm -hmm. and say, well, Lot was taken out and then it was destroyed. Noah was taken out and then it was destroyed. You read those passages, and you know what it proves? It proves the same day that we are taken out is the day that God's wrath is poured out. Because it says the same day that Noah entered the ark. The same day that Lot was taken out. It rained fire and brimstone. And so it's not Lot was 
taken out, and then three and a half years later, God destroyed Sodom. Noah was entered into the boat, and then three and a half years later, God destroyed the world. No, the same day is how is what the connection is when it comes to the destruction. But how about this? When Noah was a preacher of righteousness, how many people got on the boat with Noah? Eight? He was the eighth person. Yeah. Yeah? So what about the rest of the world? What'd they do? They snubbed their nose at him because they said, dude, we've never seen what you're talking about. Have a nice day. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that tribulation or persecution arised because of the word in Noah's day? Mm -hmm. So was it just smooth sailing and all of a sudden he got on the boat and then the, you know, then the floods came? And then you think about Lot. You ever read Genesis 19? Right. You ever read of the Sodomites compassing his house and what they did to him and what they, tra they tried to get in and, you know, you know, what happened to his uh, sons-in-law, you know, when they were left behind? You know what I'm saying? And there wasn't tribulation for Lot before he was taken out of that city. There was tribulation for Lot when he was taken out of that city. And he knew it was coming, and he was prophesying what was coming, just like Noah. Nobody wanted to listen to him. And then when it was time, and they were clear, and they were out of the way, God rained down fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's an example for all those that afterward would live ungodly. Yep. But... So the, the men in Sodom were not looking for the coming of the, uh, the uh, you know the coming uh, wrath to come. They were eating and drinking and being merry and just going about their own wickedness. They were the ones that were taken by surprise, but Lot knew what was coming. Yep, mm -hmm. and it's the same. So to to misuse that illustration like that, it is a misuse of the illustration. Right, it's incomplete. Again, it 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 all comes to, together once you realize when does the wrath start. Now, if the wrath starts at seal one, the beginning of the seven years, then we have to be taken out mm -hmm. because we cannot see the wrath of God. That's a promise. But you're going to find that the wrath does not begin until the sun and moon are darkened. That happens before the great terrible day of the Lord, and that's when the multitude no man can never shows up. So I'm hoping that this helps clarify some things. Yeah. I'm hoping that it at least gives a timeline of what those seven years look like, because seven years are still yet to be fulfilled. And we, you know, and one of the interesting things too, you know, speaking of not knowing the day or the hour, the seventy weeks. You had the seven weeks. Then you had 62 weeks back in Daniel. Remember that Daniel chapter mm -hmm. 12? We didn't really talk about those, and that's not the point of this episode. Right. But what's interesting is those weeks are told by the beginning. The beginning of the seventh week, the beginning of the 62nd week, but the final week, that seven years, we don't know the beginning. We only know the middle. Right. Because if we knew the beginning, we could, we could count. We could do the math. And we know the day the Lord comes. So he tells us the beginning of the seven weeks, the beginning of the 62 weeks, but here's the middle of the seventh week, uh, that 70th week. And that means we won't know. We're going to be able to start, you know, we're going to see the tree budding, like, whoa, it's close. Right. We're not going to know. He we're only going to be able to look back. Once that event happens, we're going to be able to look back. Oh, it started on this day, but we won't know. And that, that just shows, again, the consistency of the word of God. He didn't give you the start date. He gave you the middle event. So we have to go back and count to know mm -hmm. when it began. But we'll be in heaven at can, that point. <laughs> can, uh, can we take just a minute and work towards that middle event sure. in Scripture? So we already went to Revelation 12. We saw Satan uh, fighting with Michael and his angels, him being cast out, him knowing that he hath but a short time. The chapter concludes with the dragon being wroth with the woman and going to make war with the remnant of her seed. And it's important to read this to understand who he's going to make war with, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, chapter 13 comes in, and we see the Antichrist now. Right. Okay? And if you go to Revelation chapter 6, what's the first seal? A conqueror yeah. going forth to conquer. Uh, and, a crown and, was yeah, given unto him. And a crown him. is given yeah. unto him. And in Revelation chapter 13, we see this Antichrist come on the scene, and it says in verse number 2, And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. So there you go. He's given a crown, and he's going forth now to conquer. Now, if you skip down, and this is all in order, by the way. That's why we're covering <laughs> it like this. So... And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Now mm. there you go. 
there's three and a half years, right? And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the the saints saints and to overcome them. And power was given uh, given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all them that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, if you go to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. Right. Let's tie some scripture with scripture. So we see Satan cast out of heaven. We see a power given unto the Antichrist from the dragon to make war with the saints. All the world's going to worship him. He's going to open his mouth to blaspheme God. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Amen. This is the rapture. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So in Matthew 24, Mark 13, when he says, hey, they're going to say, hey, lo, Christ is here, or Christ is there. He says, there's going to be many false Christs that arise. But he's given us specific things to look for so that we know when it's the real deal. Right. And this is not the real deal what we're about to read because he says let no man deceive you by any means and that's what the teaching of the pre-tribulation eminent rapture jesus can return at any moment in time is it's a deception that we're specifically warned against here because he says for that day shall not come so is it eminent is it any moment no because that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition that's who we're reading about in revelation chapter 13 That's the conqueror that's coming uh, to conquer. That's in Revelation chapter 6 at the first seal. He says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So we tie 2 Thessalonians to Revelation chapter 13. Now we've got the devil cast out of heaven, the Antichrist rising, going forth to conquer, blaspheming God, declaring himself to be God. Revelation 13 says war with the saints and the rest of the world worshiping him. Then in that very same chapter, another prophet comes on the scene. And it says, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So this guy is killed and then miraculously comes back because it's healed and the world worships him because they think that he's Jesus Christ. They think that he's God manifest in the flesh. And he doeth great wonders, this is the false prophet, the second beast, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live and he had power to give life under the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. It sounds like we're entering a time of great tribulation right, right, right here. And this description, this false prophet, he gives power unto an image that he convinces the world to set up in honor of the beast, to worship the beast. He gives power to it to determine that whosoever doesn't worship this beast should be killed and we enter into a time of great tribulation because this is the abomination of desolation this is the moment this is the midpoint of that seven year period we see this abomination of desolation set up we see the mark that's distributed because of it and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name and then if you go to revelation chapter 20 well well if May, we if I might be getting ahead of you, but we are seeing the same timeline, right? We see right. that this Antichrist comes in, the abomination of desolation set up. It's a time of persecution. Like We're getting close to the end, right? We know that that's the middle. We, we know that this is the midway. This is big deal. But in Revelation chapter 14, right after where you were just in 13, when all mm-hmm. this is happening, guess what happens in chapter 14? Right. Jesus shows up to rapture us out of great tribulation right. before the wrath of God. So 
Let, let's just remember, think about all your rapture verses. Jesus coming on a cloud, mm-hmm. rapturing the people. Verse, so the Antichrist is getting ready. He's, ki- he's killing any. He's a vengeance. He's killing Christians. The mark of the beast, the abomination of, de- of desolation set up. They're, they're doing all these wicked things. Verse Chapter 14, four, verse 14. And I looked and behold, a white cloud. And one that sat, uh, and, and upon the cloud sat one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Mm-hmm. Here, Jesus, in the time when the Antichrist is culminating to this abomination of desolation, a time of, of persecution, great tribulation, Jesus Christ, our rescuer, our savior, Amen. comes out on a white cloud, and he's got a sickle, and he reaps the earth, and we're taken up from this mess and the judgment of God. What you'll read about from then on, guess what? Seven vile judgments that happen after Jesus steps out on a cloud and takes the people the saved, raptures us out, then he pours out his judgment. I mean, it's just, once you can see it, I hope that this episode gives a little clarity. If anything, causes you to just go through and restudy these things. Mm -hmm. Count those months, 42 months. Why does he call it 42 months? 42 months of tribulation, time, times, half time, 1260, 1290 of wrath. Mm -hmm. Why does he do that? Why does he tell us clearly that in those first 42 months, it's not his wrath. The earth is not judged. Yeah. The trees Why have not, not just been call hurt. it 85 weeks? Or I'm sorry, 84. 85 months. 85 months. Well, there's there's the, the 42, and then there's, so that's 1260, and then 1290. Right. The 1290, so, right. The know, Great Tribulation, it right. Up, it's, it's what? It's 85 uh, months. Why not refer it to that as that? Right. And Why refer to 42? Why refer to Which goes back to Brother Greg's statement. Yeah. It's only referred to in one lump one time, but even then, even then, it's divided in half. Exactly. Every time after that, it's mentioned in halves. This first half, the second half, the first mm-hmm. half, the second half. And then right in the middle, we see the abomination of desolation. And that's a key thing. We're looking for that. Yeah. Because that's what in Luke, he says, hey, when you see that, look up. For your redemption draweth nigh. When you see that, you better start looking up because that's the moment that you know that Jesus is coming. It's right around the corner. It's, it's right now. It's coming. Mm-hmm. You see that abomination of desolation set up, right? Now, uh, if we get to this, this part here, am I, am I correct in saying, because you guys have come from uh, a long way from believing in the pre-tribulation rapture, right? And you don't hold that view anymore. But am I correct in saying that people that do believe in that also do believe, like we do, that we will rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a pre-tribulational, right? yeah. Yeah. Our, I'm so sorry, we could all agree on that. We'd be like, all right, let's set the rapture aside. Premillennial. Pre, pre, you know, you, you guys believe as well as we do that we're going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. So if we go to Revelation chapter 20, where we can clearly agree on that first— well, let's read a couple verses and let's figure out who's being spoken about, right? He says in verse number three, and cast him, talking about the devil, that shall be bound for a thousand years. So we're talking about that millennium. This is and after the wrath of God. This now. is after the right. wrath of God. So we're, we're, fa- we're forwarding to after the seven years, Satan's bound up, he's cast, uh, he's cast into, into hell, and he's going to be bound there for a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. So we've talked about this already in this conversation. When does that happen? In the first half of the seven years in the tribulation. And for the word of God, And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. We all just agreed that that's us. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The first resurrection. 
includes those who did not take the mark of the beast. Exactly. So if it's if the resurrection or rapture happens pre seven years, the pre tribulation, mm-hmm. how can you say that this is including people that didn't worship the beast if the beast hasn't been right? Because if the if the rapture happens before the seven years, then we're exempt from having to deal with the antichrist. Right. Well, you'd have a problem because you'd have to have you'd have to have two raptures. Right. You'd have to have the rapture before it began, and then a rapture after it's over for those who didn't take the mark. But the Bible doesn't say these are the first two resurrections. Mm-hmm. It says this is the first resurrection, right. which is including those that did not worship the beast. Yeah. So where is the first resurrection? Mm-hmm. After the mark of the beast is instituted, mm-hmm. after the forty-two months, and, and the mark but of the before beast, the wrath. The mark of the beast comes when the abomination of desolation is set up. Right. Now, with that understanding, if you go to Matthew chapter 24 and you read it in order, it makes perfect sense. It does. Yeah. And so I'm not sure how we're doing on time, but we could just continue on and go on for forever on this subject. So our challenge to you is if you're watching this and you have questions, you know, there's there's a lot of areas that we could really just stay and focus on one thing. Our goal today was to give a general overview of that week and how that it's not all tribulation, it's not all wrath, it's divided nicely in half with the abomination of desolation, a time of great tribulation, and that's why we hold a post-tribulational pre-wrath, which means the middle of the seven weeks is when we believe Jesus Christ comes back. I want to close out with the verse, and then if you have any closing statements, you could do so. Um, but that was a reference we referenced earlier about lift up our, your heads, redemption draweth nigh. We pre-trib, every, everybody who believes in rapture, they sing that song. They sing, they, they hold to those verses. Mm-hmm. That's something they thunder from the pulpit. Redemption draweth nigh. But look at the context of it. Yeah. The context of it is after tribulation, then Jesus comes, look up your heads. And I just want to read that. The Bible says, in Luke chapter 21, verse 25, And there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations. And remember, if you're following along, that is according to Matthew and Revelation, after the tribulation yep. is when these, th- these signs in heaven begin to happen. Okay? With perplexity, the sea, the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, notice it's on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, all these things on the earth, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Yeah. They love the last part of that verse, mm-hmm. but the context is signs in the heavens. Yeah. Stars falling, sun being darkened, conflict on earth, leading up in here. Woe uh, that give uh, that verse twenty three. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there should be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. So he's describing a time that's horrible, but he says when you see this, lift up for your redemption draweth nigh. I mean, it connects well. Any closing mm-hmm. thoughts, brother Greg? Yeah. So for me. I think even pre-trib or like we are post-trib, we can all agree we're not going through God's wrath. Yeah. Right. All they have to do is understand they need to just bump that timeline just halfway up. That's all they have to do. We're not saying we're going through wrath. They're not saying they're going through right. wrath. We just need to understand there's a reason God broke that timeline down. And when we begin to understand that, the scriptures open up to you. You begin to see things the way right. God put them down. And the Bible, you know, it, it gains that life back to it where you don't need some commentary or some guy to, to guide you through every little thing. And if you don't see it just his way, then you're, you know, you're, you're just lost. No, you can actually just read it the way the Bible writes it. Amen. And it's an amazing thing. Amen. Brother Scott? Yeah, so here's here's the here's the thing. Here's why I believe this is so important and we that we take heed to the warnings that we be not deceived in this matter is because we have a very important role to play in this three and a half uh, years of tribulation and then great tribulation. God has a job for us to do and he has an expectation for us and we sh- we're, we're to preach the gospel we're to be a witness against them even though they're going to persecute us and deliver us into the synagogues 
uh, you know, to be killed. And, you know, we're supposed to not even take any thought for what we should say in that right. day. We're supposed to be a witness for God and have the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ in these days. And he, and he said, he'll recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And when God's wrath is poured out, it's going to be a great, glorious day as a child of God to be with the Lord in the air and to see that, that tribulation recompense on the world. And in Daniel, where we started, he says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And as a Christian, and understanding the, the purpose that God has for leaving you in this world to be a witness and to preach the gospel unto every creature, that don't you want that? Mm -hmm. Don't you want the, to share in that glory? And so in this period of time, when he, when he describes all these things and he gives you all these things to look for, and did it sound like it was going to catch us like a thief when he said, lift up, look up? your redemption draw lift up your eyes look up your redemption draweth nigh are we are we going to be taken by surprise when we're looking up waiting <laughs> for jesus to come no we have a job to do and he says that they that turn many to righteousness as they'll shine as the stars forever and ever amen, amen. and our job and our purpose should be that we would have the desire to glorify god in this life and in this world all the way up to his coming all the way up to his return amen let me close out with james chapter 5 verse number 7 to kind of that that verse popped in my mind as you were talking about shining as stars the job is to preach the gospel mm -hmm. now you know i've run into people i'm sure maybe the listeners you guys have run into people who think the tribulation has already started we don't know when it's going to start. It's right. not like God says, all right, start. We only know when the middle happens based on the events that take place, and we're, we're raptured up. Yeah, so, we're, we're going to be able to observe that event because yes. we're going to know what it looks like. And so we'll start counting backwards, but nobody's yeah. going to know at that point, okay? So even if you could convince me, you know, we've heard it. Trump is the Antichrist. Obama is the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Biden's the anti. I mean, and, and, they, and you know, there's one of these times it's going to be right. I mean, one, it's going to happen. Yeah. But even if you could convince us the tribulation has already started, the job of the Christian doesn't change right. during the tribulation. Amen. So it's not like Jesus says, be a witness, go to church, sing the songs, be faithful. But when tribulation comes, hide. Mm. <laughs> Hunker down, hold on. For no, he says, just keep going. Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. So don't get too focused on the start of a tribulation. Get focused on what we're supposed to be doing, whether it's tribulation or not. And so the tribulation. But James chapter 5, verse 7 says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of our Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And he's telling you, he's telling you be patient. These events are going to happen. Hang on. But they haven't happened yet. Because God has long patience for fruit. He wants people to be saved. So with this in mind, grab your New Testament and let's go soul winning. Thank you for listening to us. Leave your questions, comments in the, in the, uh, the, the comment section below. We'll do our best to address those in the next episodes. Maybe even develop a whole episode to some of the questions and comments that may come in. But we appreciate you uh, uh, listening. Our goal is to have one this month, uh, this time next month as well. And we just hope that you'll uh, subscribe, share, spread the word, uh, get the good news out. And we'll just tackle those hard subjects in the next episode of What Say in the Scriptures. <laughs>